Hi and welcome to another video for Shopmade Tools and Upgrades. In this video I'm going to talk about the upgrades I've done to my Rong Fu milling machine. So let's start with the base that it's bolted to and I'll try and find some old pictures of this milling machine when I first got it just so that you can see the difference. So you can see at the front there there's a bit of a cavity in there and you may be able to see some kind of rails or bars going back into it and that's designed for some drawers that I want to make up to slide in there to you know hold my tooling and other bits and pieces that I need to store. Now I built these uh, doors on the side I was going to have uh, you know fixed walls but the doors are actually quite useful so they've got these um, spring loaded mechanisms down here so it's just a plunger with a spring in there and it fits into a hole so it keeps it nice and secure and then when I want to open the door I just lift it up and open the door like that and there you can see on this door I have some storage for my table clamps and those sorts of things and I can actually get in right round the mill so it's very handy to have that door on there that you know can be opened up to get in there and on the other side here I have the same design so a swinging door that opens up and the DRO is mounted to the top and then I have the electrical panel bolted to this door on this side so we have an isolating switch here just turn that off for now and in the box we have all the electronics so I've fitted a VFD to the mill so that I can have variable speed and uh, there's a few other components in here so it's sort of three phase in goes through the isolating switch on the side uh, through circuit breakers and through a contactor into the VFD and then I tap off a single phase uh, for a power supply on this side that feeds um, the other parts of the mill like the uh, lights and tachometer that I'll eventually put on there. So the operation is through this panel here. Now I need to redo this panel. I was waiting for a tachometer to turn up and it took over two months to get here and by that time I'd already created the panel but I've realized that the speed control potentiometer here is right by the wheel and when I've got my big gloves on and I, I can knock the speed quite easily so I'm going to redesign this um, and also put the tachometer in here as well so you know I can see what speed I've dialed up. Basically it's got an emergency stop button so that's how you would turn the power off so you can release that and then there's a um, contact switch here and we just need to turn the power on. Alright let's try that again and there's the contact switch here. And that's a DRO that you can hear beeping and then uh, the belts are a little bit noisy here so it might be a bit noisy but just uh, Ford is there. And of course if you ever need to go into reverse, maybe if you've got some sort of buffing wheel or something like that, you can always put it in reverse. So that all works really really well, very pleased with that. As I said I just need to redesign this. Um, so that I've got the tachometer in here and I've moved that potentiometer out of the way. So just another thing with the the drawers that I'm putting in here, right at the top here there's actually a, a tray for the chips. Um, so that slides all the way down the back and you can see that there's gaps down the side here for the chips to fall in or if I need to brush them off the machine they'll fall into that tray and then I can take that tray out and empty it. I don't know if you can see it in the video but the legs 
down the bottom there, adjustable. You're never going to get dead flat concrete in a in a garage, so uh, they're adjustable, so I can just sort of level it all up um, how I need it. So as you see, the DRO display is up here on the, the top of the um, door that opens, um, and it's just on a little hinge there, so I can move it around to where I want it. Um, I don't really have to move it around because it's in a quite a good position right there. I've got um, a scale on the uh, x-axis. Uh, there's one, I don't know if you can see it, but down here on the y-axis and uh, right around the back I have one on the z-axis as well. The DRO on the mill is fantastic. It's um, just so much easier to you know to, to get to dimension and without having to worry about sort of backlash and all that sort of stuff. If I could recommend, you know, something to someone who's got a mill, get a DRO because they're absolutely fantastic. And the same goes for the uh, lathe as well. Okay, so this is something that you may not have seen before. I actually did a video on this um, and I got the idea from someone else on YouTube and I referenced him in my video as well. Um, so this is just a spindle lock. Uh, I had to in the past use you know the ER32 spanner on the nut and then I had to have another spanner in this hand holding the um, spindle up here and then what happens is when I loosen the tool off sometimes it'll fall down because I, I don't have a third hand to hold the tool. So this is really good it's just uh, sort of a, a cam mechanism so when I pull this lever around I uh, don't know if you can see it on the video, but this will actually slide in and there's a pin that goes into the spindle once it's lined up. So let's just line that up to there and it goes all the way in the other side. So now that's uh, that's all locked up and I'm able to tighten up the, um, the collet nut and loosen it off and I've got my other hand where I can hold the tool at the same time. Uh, a couple of comments on the video um, people were saying you know do you plan to put an interlock on there or something um, in case you started up with it locked I didn't plan to do that I was going to try and be very careful but I have to say I have started it up when it's locked and I think at this stage uh, it's not too bad because I can hear that you know the the pulley is uh, slipping on the belt um, and I can quickly turn it off um, without causing any damage there. Um, it is spring-loaded as well, so it will flip all the way back into that position. That just stops it from vibrating, you know, in the, in the lock position if um, there's some vibration there. Okay, so jumping back on the other side of the mill here, uh, this Probably looks a little bit foreign as well uh, on one of these Rongfu mills. Um, and again, this was an idea that I got from the same guy who did the spindle lock. And uh, what it is, it's a quick release to loosen the milling head um, when I want to lift it up or lower it down. So normally there are bolts uh, that go through here. And you need to get your spanners on each side and loosen them off and you know move it up or down and then tighten it up and you know it's just um, a bit of a pain in the in the backside. This um, this is a eccentric cam so what it does is when I move this lever round these plungers here are connected all the way through to a nut on the other side and they move in to loosen it and then when I pull it back this way, they will uh, move out and that tightens the head up. So just let me push that all the way around like that. And then this head is now loose. And then I can just pull that all the way back through and that's now locked solid. Uh, fantastic idea. Um, you know, all credit goes to the other guy I'll put links down in the description if you want to see um, his build on that. I built this before I uh, made any videos so um, you know I don't have anything recorded for it unfortunately but 
he's got a video on how he built it and um, I, I pretty much built it the same way. And uh, related to the quick release lock on the other side that we just saw is this box here. So and originally there was a handle here to wind the head up and down so I've put a, uh, a motor on here uh, with some gears and um, a switch and that is how I uh, raise and lower the head. So simply releasing the quick release lock on the other side I can turn this on. I have a very bright LED light here that tells me I have now powered this up so then I can raise it up or if I need to lower it down and then basically that lights telling me to go to the other side and lock it up which I've just done and then I can turn that off and we are all locked in position ready to go now to build this this is just a piece of uh, sort of one millimeter panel steel I just folded it up on the folder um, I printed out a panel using my 3d printer here um, and that just bolts on with those two bolts so it all works pretty well um, the gears in here I had to uh, take those off my daughter's bike and she wasn't very happy about that so I had to go and find her another bike um, but I think she forgives me by now so the stand here is basically built with uh, 80 millimeter by 60 millimeter box section so it's quite big and sturdy I've put these panels in here just to give it some aesthetics you know make it look quite nice the milling machine itself is bolted to these two pieces of uh, C channel and they're about 170 millimeters uh, wide um, but I've left uh, gaps in here on purpose so that you know any chips uh, can if they come flying off they can actually go down to the chip tray um, and there's a gap in between both of those uh, bits of C channel there as well it's absolutely solid um, you know it's not going to move anywhere so it's come up as quite a good design as you can see those doors swing right open and you know I have full access around the whole machine here so you know if I need to fix anything or replace any parts uh, I can get in there and that was the benefit of uh, having those swinging doors uh, one thing I almost forgot to mention is the uh, recent build of this arm here um, and that's to hold my iPhone that I use for um, recording uh, the videos here uh, so this arm fits on a bracket that swivels round I've actually made a video on this um, as well so if you want to have a look at um, well there's a video on the arm build itself and there's a video on the bracket that uh, swings around the whole mill right around the other side so um, gives you a, you know a full range uh, around the mill for doing your filming which is quite good um, so I'll put the link there for that as well what are the next steps you might be asking well as I mentioned I need to make some drawers for the front at the moment my collets are over on a different bench and I have to keep walking over there to get them so that'll be Probably another video on making the drawers. Uh, I want to add some lights that sort of come down from in here or maybe from the side. I do have one that comes from the side now, sort of a portable one, but it is kind of still quite dark so I need to add some more lights in there. Um, and as I mentioned I need to redesign that front panel and move that uh, potentiometer away from the hand wheel so that I don't keep knocking it and changing the speed I do have the tachometers now so um, you know I can install one of those as well one of the other things I wanted to do on the mill is to make a power feed for the x-axis 
and that would be over here on this um, hand wheel here so that will come off um, there will be a motor similar to this that will be mounted here and you know I've seen a couple of videos on YouTube where people have made these shop built power feeds on their mills some of them can be quite technical because you need to have the mechanism be able to just be disengaged so that you can crank the hand wheel on the other side without trying to turn the motor because uh, you know the motor like this has kind of got a worm gear in it so you won't be able to turn it um, if it's connected permanently so a little bit of thinking that needs to go on there and, and how that all sort of works but that will be a very good upgrade because sometimes when you're doing finishing and you just want a nice consistent speed it's quite hard to do that on the, on the hand wheel so the power feed will be great for that in terms of the mill that's pretty much all I need to do to it to finish it all off but there are a couple of tools that I want to make as well the first one is a uh, rotary brooch and that can be used in the mill or it can be used in the lathe and that is to make shapes in metal so if you wanted to make socket head cap screws you know with the hex in the end of the screw then you can use a rotary brooch to make that hex or you could make a square rotary brooch um, a triangle one you make whatever shape you want splines all sorts of things uh, so there's a couple of videos this old Tony's got a good video on how a rotary brooch works and you know he explains it very very well so um, that's a good one to go and look at but there's a bunch of other youtubers out there that have actually made these tools and they don't really look that hard to make so um, that's on the list and the other one I wanted to make was a boring head because I don't have a boring head and if I need some nice accurate holes that are you know larger than say 25 millimeters or an inch I think that's probably one of my biggest drill bits you know I don't really have anything apart from hole saws and you know what hole saws are like they never seem to look like they're running true or anything like that so I don't know how much of a accurate size circle that you get to cut out there as you can see the lighting over the lathe is playing a bit of havoc in the top right hand corner here when trying to do this video but anyway this was kind of supposed to be a short video on the mill and the upgrades that I've done to it and it's kind of almost 20 minutes long now so that's pretty much about it I'd like to thank uh, one of the viewers RR who actually asked the question about what was in this box and the uh, power lift and how that all worked so uh, that sort of inspired me to make this video um, on the mill and the upgrades that I've done to it so thank you very much for your comment and uh, you know just gave me some inspiration to make the video so once again if you want to get notified when I put out new videos click the subscribe button and I hope everyone has a great day thanks for watching